Aquarius workshop understanding the duality between pride and inferiority. I start with a quote from Pathwork Lecture 42 with the title Objectivity and Subjectivity. What is an inferiority complex? It is nothing else but a form of pride. For he who is so afraid of how he will appear to others, he who is so much concerned with the impression he makes, is proud. End of quote, Pathwork Lecture 42. The divine power of humility is characterized by gentle acceptance of all mature and immature aspects, by understanding the spiritual laws, by taking every unpleasant consequence as a healthy medicine, by patiently following and willingly persevering this path of inner growth, by putting God above everything and realizing that you are part of a greater whole, by opening oneself to another, by giving the best of oneself to life, by honestly seeking the truth and have self-responsibility. But when the divine power of humility is blocked, this power splits into the duality of pride and inferiority. We feel inferior to the extent that we want to cheat life. Like a child trying to get something without investment or risk and without exposing ourselves. Pride is always a compensation for inferiority. The lower the self-esteem, the more pride exists. The unconscious, immature part tries to escape the pressures of inferiority by acting out of pride and superiority, hiding shortcomings and compulsive proving that one is good enough. It tries in vain to achieve unity with perfectionistic standards and a severe, intolerant conscience. But until we humbly accept and forgive human imperfection, we cannot allow the pride-inferiority duality to merge into one. In this workshop we will investigate, with a loving curiosity, the duality between pride and inferiority on the basis of three themes from the Password Lectures. The first theme, go through the pain. As children, we are unable to perceive that the pain and rejection we experience from parents says more about them than about us. At that age, we take everything literally and experience every painful event as a confirmation of our inferiority. We still proudly repress the pain we can't handle. We desperately strive for acceptance by our parents or substitute parents. Only when we humbly accept the pain and go through the pain will we experience the relief we yearn for. Now follows a quote from Pathwork Lecture 102. In pride, due to inferiority, you feel humiliated when you are hurt. In that you give the power to hurt you to someone else. Therefore, you substitute the original pain with anger. This seems less shameful. It sets you above the other person rather than, as it seems to you, below. 
It lifts you above the true position you find yourself in, that of being hurt. In pride, you lie about your real feeling. Thus, anger and pride are connected. End of quote from Password Lecture 102. The second scene, Inner Relaxation. Pride is a need to pretend that we are perfect, which makes us tense. We want to appear better in the eyes of others than we actually believe ourselves to be. We have a deep-rooted misconception that we have to be better than others in order to survive, to be loved, accepted, valuable and respected. The immature ego considers itself more important than anyone else. It has a need to elevate itself over others by proving, impressing or being in competition. To see others as equally important as ourselves is the humble attitude that brings inner relaxation and peace. Now a quote from Password Lecture 177. Pride says, I am better than you. This means separateness. It means one-upmanship. It means everything that is opposed to a state of love. By the same token, pride may also manifest as, I am worse than others. I am worthless. I have no value. But I must hide this fact, so I must pretend that I am more. Of course, these thoughts are not articulate, but they may not be altogether unconscious. This distorted pride, as opposed to healthy dignity, is always comparing and measuring the self with others, and is thus perpetually in illusion. End of quote from Password Lecture 177. The last scene and third scene. Humility merges duality. We need to realize that we are a divine manifestation and as such deserve the best of life to the extent that we give the best of ourselves to life. Only when we humbly accept ourselves and consider ourselves to be a good, beautiful, strong and noble human being can we give the same respect to others. And as long as we do not want to deal with that part in ourselves where we refuse ourselves that honor, that courtesy and that respect, we will stay in an illusory entanglement projecting the pride inferiority duality onto the outside world. The last quote comes from Password Lecture 232. If you insult yourself because you underestimate yourself and your power, you must hurt, harm and insult others. It is very false to imagine that he who thinks so little of himself as humble and good. This is one of the many dualistic misconceptions your world is permeated with. Self-devaluation is equated with humility and goodness, and self-value is equated with pride and arrogance. Nothing could be further from the truth. For if you know your own value and your own power, and you respect this value, no matter what you do now, and no matter where you are now, then indeed you must be considerate of others and value them. End of quote from Password Lecture 232. More information you will find on my website. I wish you peace and all the best. Thank you.